thanks, uh, everybody. Good to see you. Uh, the, one of the funny things uh, when Chris is reading off the list of places or shows and things, I only get to go to about like half of those because the rest of the time it's like something online or I just get to send them everything. I wish I could go everywhere, uh, but I think that that's, I guess, part of where some of the things I do uh, with performance come in um, because they often give me an opportunity to, to show up somewhere and do some of the work. So just give me a second here. I'm going to switch the displays uh, and um, get started. It will probably be a little bit noisy, um, just a warning. Um, I'll try not to make it too loud for you. Oh. See, so uh, just this little sample. Um, it will be <laughs> that, but louder, and probably more of that. So <laughs> just um, let's take, get my display here. Backwards looking over my shoulder. Okay. Um,
see, it's, it's new piece, that's the first time um, live, so uh, it doesn't have an ending right now yet, sorry about that. Uh, okay, so let's uh, switch displays back here. And I probably, yeah, okay, I was gonna say, I think I left some things open that I shouldn't have open right now. But. Um, so I know you're not supposed to have your laptop here, but if you want to, all the presentation is here uh, online um, or else um, this URL. So there's short uh, and then uh, that's where it'll be. And um, uh, as uh, was mentioned a little bit earlier, uh, a lot of my practice right now um, and in the past uh, deals a lot with um, the internet um, and maybe not uh, in the same way that we uh, think a lot about the internet like social networks or sharing or um, uh, that sort of thing but um, I sometimes use it uh, as like the the place or the site where the work happens uh, and so um, because a lot of the stuff that I want to show um, only really works in the web browser, I thought it would make sense to do the pr presentation there too. Um, uh, and maybe you can check it out later. Uh, or if you like something, you can follow the links back. Um, so what I'm gonna talk about, um, and this probably sounds really stupid, right? Um, but uh, I'm gonna talk about a collection of artwork that I manage, which is the collection of my artwork. Um, uh, because uh, it, as you probably are aware, it's a little bit difficult to deal with the idea of someone collecting work or selling work. Uh, and when it uh, comes to things that are digital, uh, that gets a little bit more problematic. Uh, and so um, I decided years ago that I would be the proprietor of the Gridworks Collection Project Archive, which is um, uh, the collection of my work. Uh, and most of it, um, is sort of all over the place. Um, it's scattered between about five different hard drives, um, one of which is a brick and doesn't work anymore. Um, also, uh, some of it is on a laptop that got a lot of water damage uh, in a flood and doesn't work either and is in a box. Uh, and um, the stuff that I was able to salvage uh, some of for today was buried in Rubbermaid bins in a garage and also in a stack of about 600 CDs uh, in my office. Um, the ones that weren't sun damaged. Also, do you, if you didn't know, sometimes a disc can get too much sunlight. Uh, so just, just keep that in mind. Um, uh, right now, I'm, uh, the collection, the Gridworks Collection Project is no longer being added to um, because of the fact that uh, the work that I'm doing now has sort of um, changed uh, quite a bit. Um, and it, if not aesthetically, uh, in some of the sort of uh, conceptual issues surrounding it. So. Um, uh, I've sort of disqualified the things that I do now from the larger collection, even though they kind of look the same. Um, when we uh, go back through some of this stuff, I'm gonna be going like backwards in time. So since I started with like performance or presentation thing that I just like have been working on in the last couple of weeks or months, um, I thought it would make sense to just follow that stuff backwards. Um, and so probably I'll be talking back and forth. The other thing is that, um, uh, I noticed while I was organizing some of this stuff that um, the times of things that happen uh, in the collection um, are pretty spread out. And so a lot of the things kind of happen at the same time. Uh, and so it, in the like little groups of things, some of them are before or after the other ones. I guess um, trying to make a timeline uh, that's continuous out of my practice, which is very sort of like, um, doing a lot of the same thing in different ways for a long period of time um, is a little bit more difficult to, to, to organize that way. Um, so uh, I wanna talk about uh, the first couple of things, um, which is the sort of things I'm doing now, which I would call post-grid works. Um, so uh, I'm gonna have like the, the grid works um, stuff uh, or that fits under that category, post-grid works, uh, and then also um, prior to that, the proto-grid works. Uh, so the things that were sort of led me into that direction. Um, and uh, the first uh, sort of um, thing uh, in the list uh, that I wanna kind of use as an identification for where things stopped being grid works uh, is with a project called um, Gridworks 8000 uh, underscore Meadows, um, which um, was a, 
a live performance sort of um, project uh, that um, not that dissimilar from the one um, I was doing a little bit earlier, um, but had me doing a lot of more live typing. Um, and so uh, the video itself uh, is sort of made in bits and pieces uh, that I was able to mix between. Uh, but then all of the scrolling, uh, and you'll see uh, in a second here, um, also typing, uh, is where I was um, sort of editing the document uh, or the drawing uh, or the animation or whatever as it was kind of happening. Um, and uh, the reason that this sort of like um, separates uh, the, the project from the other Gridworks stuff uh, is that it's the first time that I let myself use the text characters in the project uh, for things other than just like aesthetic value. So uh, they, I let myself like write words uh, into the project instead of um, what you'll see in earlier examples where um, text characters are really just like marks uh, or shapes or something like that. Um, so this was about a, a 10 uh, minute performance um, and it starts um, really sort of uh, exploring um, uh, an imaginary um, uh, sort of data space uh, that's also metaphorically like a physical space, like where I live. Um, and uh, as I was presenting this um, uh, in a few different places, um, someone came up to me afterwards, and this was in Athens, Georgia, um, and an uh, older, older guy, and he was like, well, this is, it was very, uh, it, was like, it was like poetry, it was very poetic, it was like a narrative field. And I was like, had to do a little bit of research because to me, I was really just doing the same thing that I was doing earlier, but instead of just sort of drawing, uh, I was also writing uh, or communicating, um, so visually and verbally at the same time. Uh, and I didn't really think about it like poetry. And after he said that, that's when it started to dawn on me that by um, really adding in or letting it, some of the things become words, um, really changes the, the nature uh, of what I was showing or what I was trying to show. Um, and so uh, that's kind of where uh, the direction um, to what I've been working on over the last uh, year or two has kind of sort of evolved from. Um, this thing that was kind of live uh, performance, uh, noise and feedback sort of based and then um, adding in words. Uh, and so to kind of follow that up, um, for uh, an exhibition, uh, you can see a, a shot here of it, uh, an exhibition that I had this past summer um, at Transfer Gallery in Brooklyn. Um, I was working on a project in spring and summer uh, called uh, gridcycles.net, uh, which it sort of deals with a lot of those same uh, animation um, practices or you know, aesthetic principles I've been looking at. Um, but um, it does it all in the browser. So if we, um, I'll just load it up really quick. And this is one that you can actually see in the Union Gallery. I don't know how much longer the show is up right now. Um, but uh, basically, um, later on when you see some of the earlier animations, you'll kind of notice where the, 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 um, the action or, or the, the movement comes from uh, here. Uh, but in this case, this is all 3D type that's rendered in the browser. So it's just JavaScript. Um, so it's not an animation at all. Nothing was sort of pre-made. Um, and uh, if uh, you want to later, uh, just look at the source code. Uh, and um, you'll see that really uh, all that's being displayed is randomly um, eight different lines of text. Uh, and the text sort of describes uh, what the project is supposed to look like. Um, so uh, it's animated uh, in that the, the camera moves in the space. Uh, but it's also interactive, so uh, we can kind of change the perspective or the view. Um, and it's a little bit minimal control. There's other stuff that people are doing with uh, JavaScript and animation in the browser that are more interactive. Uh, but for me, this was a really interesting compromise um, uh, uh, aesthetically because it sort of uh, allows me to predetermine some things uh, and to generate the kind of animation that I want uh, procedurally. Uh, but also to allow the user to sort of explore uh, or to investigate it. So it's not just like a timeline uh, or it's not played uh, just like the other video, like I have to go to a you know, video site in order to play the video or something like that. Um, so there are eight uh, different um, iterations of the same thing um, with just different sort of 
um, the variables. So some of them have to do with where the location of all of the text is or where the camera moves. But overall, each page is basically exactly the same thing. Uh, so all I will go to in and change is things like color uh, and where these things are in relationship to each other and then how the camera moves. Uh, and I, I like this um, also uh, as a, a platform for exhibiting uh, digital media or um, interactive art uh, because it really can be displayed on just about anything. Like I can run this on my phone right now uh, and I'll have more or less the same type of display. Uh, of course, is much you know different experience, big, giant sized, right? Uh, but um, I, I, I like that um, uh, I'm able to sort of run this in just about uh, any contemporary web browser right now, uh, and uh, it can be fairly open ended uh, and play for forever um, or indefinitely. Um, so uh, to kind of like um, end uh, that little part, right? So these things that are now. Uh, what I call my post-grid works, um, have a, a lot of uh, more uh, 3D modeling and animation. So if I were to cat categorize or like come up with some of the sort of characteristics uh, of this stuff that's different, it's mostly 3D animation or 3D modeling uh, in different ways uh, and also that it uses language uh, or word parts uh, or letters that are meant for more than just marks. Um, so um, uh, we'll see a little bit more about that. Um, the newer stuff that I've been doing and, and the, the performance that was a little bit earlier, uh, although it doesn't look like it, some of the um, pieces are made from motion capture data. Uh, so at, at my um, position uh, out in Whitewater, we have a motion capture studio that I'm working with. Uh, and um, my students are usually trying to use it to make like uh, characters for a game, move around or jump around or something like that. Uh, and then I take their captures uh, and I just map it to my drawing uh, or my text characters and they get kind of crazy all over the place. So um, some of these guys that are jumping all over the place, even though I've you know, processed it and added in some feedback or something like that, um, the, the way that they're moving um, came from uh, someone standing in the stage like jumping around or falling down or doing something stupid. Um, and to me that's really an uh, interesting way to sort of, I guess, um, make uh, these things that are usually very sort of, I guess, um, uninteresting or static, uh, like uh, a text character uh, or like the letter T uh, by itself doesn't really do very much. But if you map that to someone's elbow, all of a sudden, um, whatever action they're doing, uh, your T is going to look like it's like alive a little bit. Uh, and, and I find that really fascinating. Um, so uh, to, to go back um, now, um, from post-grid works uh, into uh, grid works uh, proper, um, we're, we're, the timeline is sort of 2003 to 2014. Um, and um, although um, I say that I'm now doing post-grid works, I'm also doing some grid works too at the same time. So uh, again, it's hard to sort of completely separate all of the threads out, but they um, feed into each other quite, quite um, a lot. Um, so uh, to kind of example that, right, I mentioned gridcycles.net and showed that a little bit, and that's on, um, in the Union Gallery right now. And also I uh, have a wall drawing um, in the Union Gallery. So this is a different one, um, uh, a different example of that series. Uh, but these are um, uh, work that's um, uh, cut, um, ASCII art cut into vinyl. Uh, so I make these giant patches uh, of vinyl uh, and then install them in the gallery, like right on the wall. Uh, and um, the, as we sort of work backwards, um, you'll, you'll see that the, a lot of the times um, what I'm trying to, to deal with is ways of talking about or displaying uh, digital media or digital art that's not just as simple as like, I printed it out on a piece of paper and then we framed the paper. Um, I, I wanna like, uh, you know, figure out um, some ways that match uh, the work that I'm doing or allow me to sort of like reinsert my hand into it. So um, making this sort of, you know, type uh, installation on the gallery wall is really sort of a backwards way to do things. So I'm cutting these out of vinyl into like giant patches uh, and every single time, no matter how much I plan it out, I've done about probably like six of these in different places. Um, every single time that I do it, I have to refigure out how to do something simple like 
rotate this 30 degrees. Um, and I have to come up with all kinds of different ways of using my phone as an angle finder uh, and all kinds of other stuff because when I do that um, in previous um, uh, work, uh, all I have to do is go to, you know, like edit, transform, rotate 30 degrees uh, and it's done. Uh, and then I can just move it where I want to and I don't have to think about it. Uh, and so when I'm, when I'm putting them on the wall, it's this exact same process. I'm doing the exact same thing, but by having to like do it by hand, all of a sudden it's this crazy problem uh, that I have to solve. Uh, and I was fortunate enough um, this time when I installed in the Union Gallery um, to have someone help me uh, a lot. Um, normally I'm doing this, I would do this by myself, and it would be great because I would get the gallery for the day um, to do the installation and no one would be around, I could listen to my music or whatever, and I could just spend the whole day like figuring it out and have lunch and like take it easy. Uh, and um, uh, this last time, uh, it was a little bit bigger um, than some of the other ones, uh, and so having an extra hand uh, was really useful. So these are the first two. Um, this one is uh, at my old position um, at Penn State Altoona. Um, uh, that was the first one. So this is the first time I did something like this. Um, because we just got a vinyl cutter and I wanted to try it out. Uh, and then the, the one earlier was from uh, a show in uh, Philly uh, at Little Berlin Gallery. Um, coincidentally enough, uh, Little Berlin Gallery uh, and the show that I did that, um, this one in, uh, was curated by um, Kalani Nicole, who's the um, director of the Transfer Gallery in New York, who I've been showing with. Uh, so I, I met up with um, them when I was in Pennsylvania. Uh, and then um, was able to, to work with them also now that they're uh, working in New York. Um, so uh, these wall drawings um, are ongoing uh, and they're um, sort of planned uh, and also uh, improvised. Um, the, the vinyl's cut uh, and some of the pieces are made ahead of time, but like I said, it never works out the way you plan it to when you get to the gallery uh, and you have to sort of problem solve or figure out what's the, the best way to use the space uh, for the installation. Um, along with um, doing performance, um, those two threads, I, I think a, a commonality between them is that there are ways for me to have to go somewhere to do something instead of what I would normally do, which is like sit in front of my computer uh, in the closet. I used to, my, when I lived in Milwaukee I didn't, uh, and I wasn't in school anymore, my studio was the closet in our one bedroom apartment. Um, now I don't even have that, I just have like a corner of a desk. Um, so, so anyway, right, it's a, it's a, it's, there are ways for me to get out of that uh, and to go like meet people and put stuff up and like hang out and talk about everything. So along, uh, uh, along with that stuff, uh, I'm going to see how many of these I can stream at the same time. Uh, uh, we'll just do four, I guess. Um, along with um, a lot of that work um, and interspersed through the last probably like eight or ten years, um, I've been making uh, animations using a lot of the same stuff. Um, and these are uh, meant to be very slow uh, and um, a little bit meditative. Um, uh, but um, it, it, the, the, the fun for me in making these is that they're like, they're really just like um, everything else that I've been doing uh, all, all the time, which is to do the same thing over and over again. Uh, and then make small modifications. So uh, this um, whole uh, animation, however many layers it is and however many little groups of text, really just comes from like sort of one small little group uh, that gets repeated however many times and rotated however many times uh, and then applied uh, with different kinds of rotation. Uh, and um, to me, um, in, uh, when I'm working, uh, that becomes one of the, the most interesting ways or the thing that m interests me most uh, about making things is that like I can just keep trying the same thing over and over again and making small changes and each time uh, I'm going to have a different result. Uh, and that different result uh, is usually a lot of times really surprising. Um, so um, uh, again, uh, some of these loops are like eight or ten minutes long. Uh, and if you've ever met me before or talked to me, I have a very short attention span. Uh, and so these are also a challenge for me to make um, or to, to watch. Uh, and, and I guess um, part of that is because they're, they're more meant to be ambient. Um, not something that we're necessarily sort of like um, focus on and we have to get everything or that there's a narrative, but that it kind of is just like this thing that happens. 
uh, and is happening sort of in and around us. Uh, and I guess that uh, relates back to, to the title uh, of all of these videos, which is um, Grid Soul or Grid Sol, which is kind of like a star. So these are uh, a little bit like um, a reference um, to planet or star or something that's sort of uh, operating at a different time scale than us uh, in a different location. Uh, and we can only sort of take in uh, bits and pieces of it at a time. Um, uh, yeah, um, we could watch these uh, a lot. Um, right now, um, uh, I think a group of these have been screening in Toronto at the Drake Hotel. Um, uh, an artist that we've been working with on and off for a number of years up there has like taken a position there where she's programming their video stuff. Uh, and she was like, oh, can I show some of those? I was like, yeah, take them all. Do it, do it. Let's, let's show them. Um, and, and then to kind of like get a, a, a bridge between uh, those animations and then the, the ones with JavaScript in the browser, um, I also uh, did a lot of work um, that was sort of uh, the same uh, approach but all uh, directly uh, in the web browser. So these are um, uh, a small group of text um, repeated um, over and over and over again um, and then given um, really simple um, CSS animations. It looks like they're loading a little bit slow, so we won't be able to see them move too much. Uh, but if you uh, load some of these on your own, um, one of the sort of interesting things to me about them is that um, this uh, is only like uh, HTML and CSS. So it's not even very complex um, uh, markup or anything like that. It's just really sort of basic stuff and again, just repeated uh, over and over and over again. Um, so uh, to kind of like get back to, you know, some of these connections, um, right, uh, again, uh, my work, uh, I think, uh, now that I like have been looking back over at it and over and over again at all this stuff, is really just trying out uh, the same thing or the same idea uh, as many different possible ways as I can think of to do it. Uh, and um, the, the fun part uh, about that is uh, when you get to show the work and sort of see it all in a group or put together a presentation like this and then start to, to see where those threads cross each other. So this was my um, solo show uh, at the Transfer Gallery uh, in Brooklyn uh, in, I think, 2013. It was the second show that they had. So they opened up um, uh, just a, a little less than two years ago. Uh, and their first show was Alexandra Gorchinsky, um, who was also um, in showing in Philly and then moving to New York. Uh, same with the directors of the gallery. Uh, and then I was the, the second one um, to show there. Uh, and for me, um, that was a, a really great opportunity to, to try out some new things like um, displaying prints in light boxes, um, uh, which I hadn't done until that time. Uh, and then also um, video projection, and then uh, a thing that I've been toying around with that I was able to buy on a grant a few years ago, which is just a special projection screen. It's supposed to be like magic, right? It's called hollow screen. And you, you're supposed to use it in your you know, department store to do your advertisement or your commercial. Um, you have lots of light in the space, but you can see your projection really great. Um, uh, so it's super expensive, and it's really just like fancy plexiglass. Um, but um, I thought it was really fun because um, for projecting on, uh, if, if you don't know, and uh, maybe we'll look at some stuff later, um, the, when you project something black onto uh, just about any surface that you can see through, the black kind of like goes away um, because it's not light. Uh, and so you can kind of see through. And then uh, with this uh, hollow screen, one of the, the interesting things, it's kind of hard to see in these shots, um, but you can sort of see through it to what's around it. Uh, and, and to me, uh, that again, uh, in installation, affords a really interesting uh, opportunity between the thing that's time-based or the thing that's moving and things that aren't moving. Uh, and when they're made up of a lot of the same sort of marks or, or type or whatever, then, the, then those relationships really come forward. Um, this was probably the longest um, wall drawing. Um, I, sometimes I go for height and sometimes for length. Um, when, I, when I did the one in the Union Gallery, I wanted to do two walls. Um, to see what that's like. Uh, and that was really a fun perspective challenge. Um, uh, I haven't had to uninstall many of these, um, and I'm very f glad about that because they're really hard to take off. Um, so uh, if you work in the Union Gallery, I'm really sorry that very soon you'll have to t peel off all those letters because I put a lot on there. 
Um, uh, um, uh, so uh, to, to, to move on, though, um, I want to go, there's like a few anomalies uh, in the Gridworks collection project um, that don't use uh, typography um, uh, that's sort of standard or pre-made. Um, in, uh, in this case, um, in Gridfont 7, it, it's because it's a typeface that I created myself. Um, so uh, my, I, one of the things I was sort of kind of fascinated uh, with um, here and there is the idea of like um, images that are language or language that is images. Uh, and so I kind of was always thinking about making something that would translate. So you could type something in and then it would turn it into images. So the text characters become a color uh, or something like that. Uh, and um, I always had a hard time figuring out how, I, how that would work um, procedurally. And so um, my shortcut solution was that, well, I would just make a typeface that's pictures. And then you can type in whatever. Uh, it, so it's kind of like fancy wingdings, right? Um, so you can type in whatever and you can change it to pictures. Um, and um, uh, I kind of like had some other ideas behind that. Um, in this case, um, I, in grid font seven, so I made a bunch of them um, over a course of a couple of years. And this is the, the seventh one um, was sort of um, like me trying to take something like uh, Saul Lewitt um, wall drawing instructions and then make typographic characters that were based on that so that then I could make a, a site that, a, a web page that would show sentences on conceptual art as if it was a wall drawing. Um, so it's very convoluted um, and it's very simple when you just look at it. Um, so um, this actually, and I will show you this because this is like one of my favorite parts of it. Um, if we um, look back at the source code, um, it's really just sentences on conceptual art. Um, so it's just like I copied it and then put it in there. Um, and then um, all the rest of the display or what changes it into a sort of wall drawing uh, or um, something that looks like uh, a wall drawing is just that I'm just redisplaying it with my typeface, um, which is web font. Uh, and if you're, if you're on my site ever, you can actually download this for free uh, and use it. Um, it's, um, it's open source or whatever you, know, you want to call it. Um, because, um, right, uh, one of the things that I found after doing this, like I did this and it was kind of like, well, that's done and it's kind of finished and it was not very hard to do other than making the typeface. Um, so what else can I do with these? And the, the fun part about typography um, or text uh, is that like it's one of the most portable things that we have when we work with computers or that we work digitally. Because um, they can copy and paste it and put it for everything. It's used for everything. Um, it's a text editor. It's your Word document. When you're working in Illustrator, it's the same thing. So you can move it back and forth between different environments really, really easy. Uh, and so I also have started to play around with these occasionally um, in 3D modeling environments. Because once it's a typeface um, and you open it in, in uh, like, let's say, Blender or something like that, you can extrude it. Because um, it will follow whatever the sort of basis of the typeface is. And I didn't know that that was true when I made this, um, but it's been kind of something to like um, rediscover uh, a bunch of years later that like, oh, well, th these were kind of fun to use and I can make animations with them because they can work in After Effects. And then it's like now, oh, yeah, and they can be like weird 3D uh, grids now. Um, magic, right? Um, that's what the computers do, magic. Um, Okay, so um, to, to go back uh, a few steps um, further um, to before uh, that stuff, and probably one of the, the longest um, ongoing projects from the Gridworks Collection Project Archive uh, is a series of ASCII art drawings um, that I uh, created and only recently stopped uh, making. Um, so these um, started off um, very simple. Um, this uh, first, this is the first document that I made this way, uh, and it's from about 2008 to 2009. Uh, it's one text file that has uh, about 160 drawings, um, and those were done not every day, but close to every day. Uh, and um, I want to just kind of like uh, look at them a little bit for a second, because um, these, uh, to me, um, were a really important, oh, sorry, wrong thing. Um, these were really important to me um, making um, because 
uh, they uh, were a moment where I had a really sort of important realization. Um, well, a lot of times when we work with a computer and we're in school or whatever, and we take Photoshop and we take Illustrator and we do all that stuff, right? Um, we really talk about the tools as if they're trying to do the same thing as like our physical tools. So we have a paintbrush that's supposed to kind of be like a paintbrush. We have a pencil and it's kind of like a pencil and there's kind of an eraser and we're just like coloring and painting. Um, but those things really are a lot of other stuff going on behind the scenes. Uh, and um, what I realized one day, um, and there was a couple of other things that kind of precipitated me realizing this um, that I won't go into. Um, but one day I was just sitting there and I was thinking about it and I was thinking that um, when I'm typing, right, like when I'm making a keystroke, that uh, is, I, I think, more equivalent to drawing um, than for me to use like the simulation of, of a paintbrush or the simulation of a pencil. Uh, because it's actually like my direct way uh, of drawing in the computer or something much more direct. I can just kind of like think and it comes out the same way that I think and draw in my sketchbook. Uh, and it doesn't look that way, right, um, when we kind of step back and it seems weirder and you have to think about it a little bit different way. Uh, but, uh, but I felt like that that was the thing that made the most sense to me uh, as an artist working with a computer is that when I'm typing code or I'm typing a letter or I'm you know, drawing or whatever, all those things really just come back to me having to type something. Uh, and so um, I spent years um, making these uh, and uh, would post them um, to my various um, blogs and websites uh, over the years. Um, I stopped somewhere around 800. Um, and uh, th that took a really long time uh, because I was doing them every day, then I was doing them every couple days, and then I would do like five a week, and I would do them all in one day, and they would all be almost the same. Uh, and I kind of stopped um, because I, I more, more than anything else, just got kind of tired of, of doing it. Um, but at the same time, uh, around uh, the place where I stopped um, making these drawings uh, was when I was working on a paper uh, about ASCII art and the history of ASCII art and trying to make connections with uh, art history and concrete poetry and things like that. Um, and I started to like, get a little bit more um, invested in what people in ASCII art communities were doing uh, and kind of uh, checking out some of their sites and thinking about how like, my reason or my kind of purpose for doing it is very different. Uh, and I felt like a little bit I was kind of almost um, taking away this visual sort of thing that these people were sort of invested in and really enjoyed doing and they have their community and their crew and all that kind of stuff. And I was kind of just like on the side like taking bits and pieces of it and using it for something else without really like kind of being involved. Uh, and so I, so I, I kind of stopped doing that. Um, and also, they didn't, none of those people liked my drawings when I posted them on their sites. They were just like, it looks like a bomb. And I was like, no, it's just a drawing. Um, and they didn't, they didn't like that part. Um, so um, uh, as I was saying uh, a minute or two ago, um, right, uh, text is portable, uh, and so we can sort of move it um, to different applications and make lots of different stuff with it. And so um, uh, as you would guess, that's what I, what I did um, or what I do for a, for a lot of my work. Um, I might start with something simple uh, in a text editor, uh, but then um, multiply it uh, and give it some motion or something like that, or repeat, um, like rinse and repeat um, 600,000 times until your file barely loads uh, and it's so slow that it doesn't move anymore, and all you have in there is type. Um, and uh, I also um, am regularly, uh, in, or used to more regularly, be involved in some of the, the glitch art communities uh, and um, sort of take some of that stuff uh, and then take it apart uh, even further. So um, do it, like, and this sounds really backwards and convoluted, but make a drawing with type, uh, then make uh, a more complex drawing with type uh, and using more type, uh, and then turn that into an image, and then open the image in a text editor and edit that, uh, or open it in a hex editor and edit it so that you really don't even know what you're looking at anymore, and then just open it up and see what happens, uh, or kind of um, learn where to notice where the end of a line is or where there's white space by looking at the sort of hexadecimal values for that stuff. Uh, and um, then 
all right? We just get more versions of the same thing, but just with kind of completely um, different output. So, right, um, uh, I did track some of this back. They're all still there. This is from 2011, so this is like four years old, um, but it's still in my um, uh, old uh, blog space, and it's still type. Uh, and I, and again, uh, I think that speaks really to the, to, to me, the, of the, the interesting things about typography or about text, uh, especially when it's on the web. Um, this is exactly the same drawing uh, as I have in my text file, um, except for, or if you wanted to, you could copy and paste it out and you could have it yourself, or you could take it apart and draw it. Um, and it's really funny, too, that I have an ASCII art web ring on my um, blog, um, if anybody remembers those. Um, uh, and then, um, to like those other compositions, uh, uh, all of that stuff is also still online, too. So I'm only showing like a few examples here and there. Um, and sometimes you'll notice that um, my naming conventions are uh, very easy to understand because uh, I can't keep things organized. So I just really give everything the same names and add numbers. Uh, and so the, the higher the numbers, the older or the newer it is, and uh, you can track things back through time that way. Um, so all of that stuff um, kind of started to happen, I guess, uh, around 2008, 2009. Uh, and kind of happens a little bit um, up until now, um, and maybe a little bit differently. Uh, and um, I guess to go uh, further back, uh, to keep following the, the rabbit hole down, um, I don't know how much, uh, I don't want to run too long, so I'm going to try and skip through some of this. If anybody was around when I did uh, MFA here, um, this is um, some documentation of that work, um, which, um, the, to explain uh, is uh, very similar to the stuff I was showing earlier, but instead of using the keyboard um, and, and making iterations of the same thing or different versions of the same thing or sort of adding time uh, and all that kind of stuff, uh, this was a, a painting uh, on a panel that I sort of um, uh, slightly obsessively documented um, while I was making it uh, in order to make uh, sequential animation. So this is not like really uh, stop motion, it's not really a cell animation or anything like that. Um, it's just sort of like a process um, of painting and documenting and painting and documenting so that then that could turn into something else. Uh, and so for installation uh, or, or when I presented this, the, the only one time that it was shown this way uh, for, for my MFA show, uh, it was projected onto 16 screens with two projectors. So the screens are mostly transparent, and then the, the projection sort of gets some volume. Um, uh, I guess uh, if we were to think of anything that we looked at earlier that even remotely relates to this, some of these sort of exploring uh, projection uh, opportunities, it would have to be the stuff with hollow screens that I just was working with a couple of years ago. Um, so um, with uh, video and with animation, right, um, uh, I'm, um, in addition to thinking about sort of different ways of making it happen so that we don't have to have it in a player, we can do it in a web browser. I'm also thinking about when it is uh, a video or when it is something that's predetermined or has a certain duration, that when we install it, um, then we should also be considerate of how we show it so that it's not always just like a thing on a screen, uh, but that it also has sort of some of its own life. Um, and, and so that video just showed like a couple of parts of the way that that work was presented. It was also like each frame or each part of the drawing, because I had all of the images, turned into a couple of other things, like a really large digital print uh, and then also a bunch of transparency prints. Um, transparency is another thing I'm kind of like uh, fascinated by. And there have been lots of um, starts and stops and mistakes and dead ends and things that I don't want to do ever again or that I've abandoned. Uh, and um, they all go back to that um, process uh, or the like thing that defines a, a lot of what I do, which is just to keep trying as many of the different things that I can think of. So, um, right, uh, this is a really broken TV, uh, plain things, uh, animations. Um, I also did a bunch of like letter set drawings on um, mylar and stuff like that so that I could like make the transparency go wherever I wanted to uh, and it's a great idea until you when you live in the country you notice like how much wind there is uh, on a normal day uh, and so even when you think it's like pretty still uh, the wind is going to blow your thing all over the place and it's hard to photograph by yourself. Um, so then I tried putting them on scanner. 
Uh, and if I put it on a scanner, right, that's too boring. So then I would try to move it around on the scanner while it's scanning. Uh, and then the type will get into these kind of really even more crazy um, configurations. I think this has about four layers um, being scanned at the same time. Um, so that kind of all happened all in between all the other stuff too, just like some of the other things. And it's not all the way chronological, but kind of a little bit. Um, one of the fun things about trying to track down where all of my work in the GridWorks Collection Project Archive is located um, meant that I had to dig through a lot of different hard drives and disks and um, try to find some things that um, I don't really have very easily accessible good copies of anymore. So some of these um, come from a little bit earlier than that. And this one is just a, the same kind of idea as a painting, but it's charcoal drawing um, documented as I was making it and then um, digitally composite. Uh, so um, those images, as you get uh, a little bit further, um, they start off as like sort of one image or one drawing being animated and then turn into like four drawings, um, all animated and all layered until it kind of uh, turns into a, a lot of uh, noise uh, or a lot of white space. Um, and these were all made in grayscale too, which um, helps. Um, if you didn't notice, uh, I've had a love-hate relationship with color in my work. Uh, so far, most of it is black and white and gray, uh, and that's because I, I feel like, one, it's easier to work with um, because I can know how to do my color corrections when there isn't color, uh, and um, two, because I'm just, I feel more comfortable uh, with the, the way that it looks. Um, and following that back uh, a little bit further, um, prior to, to making some of those um, sequential animations from drawing or painting, um, I did these as a lot smaller scale drawings. Uh, so these were really, really tiny and only like 100 drawings or so. Um, and um, th this work, um, which is, you know, ink on paper um, and then some, um, you know, really modest uh, digital composite kind of stuff, um, relates to that, uh, the process of doing the same thing over and over again. Um, but in this case, I was also making like books and books of drawings that were pretty much the exact same drawing for every page of the sketchbook. Um, that uh, series is called um, The Book of Grids, uh, and it has um, seven volumes. Uh, and I've never shown the seven volumes of The Book of Grids. The first two were in a show, Once Upon a Time, and I have a, a photo of a woman looking at them in the gallery. Um, and that's the only time that I think anybody will ever see them outside of my studio. They're stored away and I, they're slightly embarrassing because um, I feel really weird uh, about having spent so much time making one drawing like, you know, hundreds of hundreds of times uh, in a sketchbook. Um, but uh, uh, like most of the other, the, the other work um, is, um, comes back to the sense of process. Uh, and repetition and repeated processes as a way to sort of reveal um, different um, sort of outcomes. Um, and I have done some works um, uh, along the same line um, in a variety of different ways. This one is actually the Mona Lisa. Um, so I, by hand, um, recreated the Mona Lisa by taking it out of um, digital uh, image um, and getting rid of a lot of the color uh, and then making a convoluted system for um, translating color or pixels to little sort of drawing marks uh, and then sort of redrew the entire thing. Um, and I spent a lot of time while I was in Milwaukee um, doing a, a lot of work like that uh, as part of my um, school. Uh, and the other stuff I was doing uh, that um, Nicholas alluded to earlier was the stuff that I was doing on the internet, um, working with um, spam, uh, I spammed a lot of people. Um, I collected, if you guys don't remember, once upon a time um, in your email, um, one of the ways that they tricked you into getting your spam messages was that it wouldn't be a message, it would be uh, an image. Uh, so it would be a picture in the email message instead of like language, so that it couldn't be filtered as easy. Uh, so I would collect all of those, uh, and I got banned from a lot of people's uh, email accounts. I got a lot, I like, for a long time, actually up until a few years ago, there were a few people that wouldn't get emails from me um, because I was still on their, like, um, do not listen to uh, or don't get messages from this person list. Um, and uh, to go back a um, step further, that's um, one of the Book of Grids right there, um, and that's the volume two. So that's volume one and that's volume two. Uh, and this is in a gallery in Champaign, um, Illinois. 
I think it's in like 2004 or something like that. Uh, and so uh, when I started that work, uh, shortly after uh, I finished um, undergrad, um, I was also making paintings. Uh, and um, I wanted to throw these in because these were the first time that language um, was part of the work too. So even though I took a break from that and wasn't dealing with words or letters or anything, um, it actually was kind of in there before. And in this case, it was more of a like um, a random sort of situation. Make a drawing or painting of something uh, and then add in some words that I thought were funny or interesting. Um, and actually, does anybody know what a master controller operator is? They work at like a TV station. They're the person that changes the tapes and stuff like that. That's the job that my brother used to have for a while. So like, even though they seem really random or weird, um, they usually have a little bit of personal significance. And I guess um, that, that kind of gets to, to, the, to the things I'm doing with language or words right now. Uh, the project I performed at the beginning um, had three words, um, uh, falling quietly within or quietly within falling. Uh, and I've been kind of mixing up those words um, in different combinations uh, for that project. Um, before um, coming to Milwaukee, um, this is what my paintings looked like. This is uh, acrylic and gold leaf on panel. Uh, and um, I guess um, is a good example of the transformative nature of graduate school. Um, where uh, I start off in this place, um, in this kind of work, and I ended up uh, as a completely different person. <laughs> Not really, um, but making really co completely different work. And then uh, last uh, thing, just really quick to mention, this is the, the proto grid works. So um, this is my BFA exhibition um, and um, a, a painting from the BFA exhibition. This is um, six feet tall and four, four feet wide. It's on uh, jute and canvas oil painting. Um, and then you can also see some of these other things. So there's some uh, sculptural ceramics uh, and a lot of drawing and painting. And I, I include these in proto grid works because um, when I track back the aesthetic uh, of some of the things that I, I ended up doing, you can see like the lots of the repeated shapes uh, or squares uh, or symbols that are kind of used over and over again. Uh, in different configurations. And then this is the, the first um, Gridworks drawing. So this is from like 2002, 2003 or something like that. And it was um, from a very um, difficult uh, life drawing session where um, I rubbed out the drawing and drew a grid over it and colored in the squares. Uh, and that led me down this um, rabbit hole uh, to where I'm standing before you today. Uh, so thank you. Um, and I can do questions or whatever you want, or if you want to clap, I don't know. <laughs> yeah.